네, 안녕하세요. Good afternoon and bonjour. 아, 노르딕 베네르크 센터가 주관하는 아, 노르딕 베네르크 센 이노베이션 팩토리 특강 시리즈입니다. 어, 오늘은 저희가 dive into Belgium. 벨기에로 한번 저희가 깊이 들어가 보는 그 세션을 만들어 보고자 합니다. 어, 코로나 상황이 아직 뭐 지속되고 있지만 조금씩 풀려나가는 것 같습니다. 다시 한번 참석해 주신 여러분들께 감사드립니다. 오늘은 굉장히 특별한 게스트를 모셨습니다. 오늘은 보서 봉동 벨기에 대사님을 모시고 오늘도 벨기에 대한 얘기를 나눠보겠습니다. 여기서부터는 제가 영어로 진행을 하겠습니다. So once again, uh, we warmly welcome Madame and, and uh, Monsieur Bouton, Ambassador Bouton, uh, to Nordic Benelux Innovation Factory. And uh, this, innova inno this innovation factory is uh, the, it's a lecture series, and a number of ambassadors, CEOs, and, and experts uh, join in, in this lecture series. Uh, but somehow, today's event, I think, is even more even more special. So we will have a lecture uh, with uh, from, from Ambassador, and for the Q&A session, we will invite another special guest. Uh, so I'm, I'm truly honored uh, and happy to introduce today's uh, lecturer, uh, Ambassador François Ponton, and he's a new ambassador of Belgium to Korea. And he graduated from the prestigious and historic uh, Univer uh, Catholic University of Louvain, Université Catholique de Louvain. And he has served many important posts in the foreign ministry. And uh, this is actually his second term in Korea. Uh, ambassador Bonton uh, has been an, had been an ambassador to Korea from 2012 to 2016. Uh, since then, he served in, in, in Bulgaria, well, the, the Belgian, Belgian ambassador to Bur Bulgaria. And this year, he uh, visited officially, and he took the second term in, as an ambassador. Well, that, that is quite uh, rare, but we are double, well, we are doubly happy to uh, have him twice in Korea. So uh, today he will address, uh, well, his lecture will cover the Belgium, Belgium in the EU, in the European Union, and subtitled The Voice of Small Countries in a Global World. Actually, what in, in well, uh, about two weeks ago, there was a Belgian festival in, in Seoul, just ended, but I saw one poster, the Belgium, some or something people do not know exactly, and the first one was Belgium is not that small, <laughs> but uh, but uh, his subtitle, the voice of small country in a global world, will give a lot of a lot of lessons and implication also to Korea. Korea has to deal with China. Japan, United States, Russia, the big powers. And Belgium is not a big country, but a Belgium, uh, the Belgium and the Brussels is the capital of Europe. So we will uh, learn, we will hear, and we will learn a lot about uh, the, the competitiveness, survivor skills, and development skills of a small country amid the big powers. So without further ado, uh, let me warmly welcome Ambassador Bonton to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ambassador François Bonton. 안녕하세요. 저는 새로운 벨기에 대사입니다. 한국말 못합니다. 미안합니다. 아주 my best to present to you my country uh, as uh, a founder member of the European Union. Uh, there will be, a, I'm not sure there will be a lot of lessons, a lot of ideas, 
but that will be only uh, at least one. And uh, the, uh, this idea is that a small country and even medium-sized powers uh, have no role in this world of forces and power if they not cooperate with others. That is my main message. And uh, I will try to demonstrate you that. Um, I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, OK. OK. So this uh, picture show you already the gist of uh, my presentation. Belgium is a flag. Of course, it's one country with its own interest. But it's embedded in many international organizations. The European Union, the NATO as a military alliance, and the global international organization that is the UN. Sorry to repeat myself all over, but at least there is one idea. <laughs> so this year is special, and I'm very happy to receive this invitation to present my country to you. Uh, because we celebrate 120 years of diplomatic relations between uh, our two countries. And uh, last week we had a big event in Itzadong. So we might be far away, but we have a lot in common, as you will see. Um, in these slides, I say the essential of what I wanted to say today um, through the description of the foundation between, uh, of the relations between Belgium and Korea. Okay. I will, ah, uh, yes, I, I was too, too close. So we fought together during the Korean War, but not alone, with the, with the UN on the military, US military command. We worked together with the uh, International Monetary Fund during the financial crisis, and we are working now together with the European Union to build an international order that is based on rules, values, and principles. A, an international order based on cooperation instead of confrontation. That is really what I wanted to say uh, today. Korea and the European Union have three main agreements. One free trade agreement, one political framework agreement, and one crisis management agreement. These cover the whole range of possible relations not only per se, but with the aim of, create, of creating an international order based on uh, rules and principles and cooperation instead of confrontation. Oh. So some slides about my country. It's a very young country, 1830, the foundation of Belgium, modern Belgium, as a constitutional kingdom. In the beginning, it was a united uh, state, cent very much centralized, uh, very proud of itself, trying to make its place under the sun among European powers. But we realized very quickly that we cannot achieve um, to impose our interests on others, and then we evolved into a federal state cooperating, cooperating with others. And another important uh, milestone is uh, the signing of the bilateral treaty with Korea. In 2019, there was a state visit uh, in Korea of our king and our queen. Uh, our king Philip likes Korea very much. When he was prince, 
he came in Korea six times and always was very happy to be here, as you see on the picture. Some basic information on Belgium to give you an idea. A population 11 million, a, little, a fifth of uh, Korea. The surface 30,000 square kilometer. A little bit, uh, I think, is the fourth or the third of the fourth of uh, Korea. The density is about the same. Korea is a little bit higher. As I said, Belgium is a multicultural state. It's a country situated between the Latin world, France, Spain, Italy, and the German world, Anglo-Saxon world, the Netherlands, Germany, England. So we have two, three different languages, French, Dutch, German. So we are really at the crossroad of many cultures, many countries. And therefore, we have been the battlefield of a lot of wars in Europe. My, uh, um, the, town where I, uh, the town where I was born, Ypres, was the first uh, town where weapons of mass destruction have been used. The gas mustard has been used in the First World War. And uh, that created for us the conviction that we have to go beyond the nation state in order to create a world of cooperation. So this is to have some fun. This is some uh, I, I Im image of, uh, of Brussels. Uh, but uh, national images, but you know, Brussels is not only the capital of Belgium, it's also the capital of the European Union and NATO. To show that Belgium is the center of Europe, you see on green the European countries. This is a little bit outdated because the United Kingdom left the European Union. So we were 28 countries, we are 27. It's a pity for the United Kingdom. <laughs> and so to show um, the situation of Belgium in the uh, NATO, uh, because I will explain you why I insist on these two different organizations. Um, so this is a little bit academic, but I wanted to give you the uh, rationale for uh, the necessity for small countries to cooperate with others and to build international organization. Is that the world as it is real, we should not uh, forget, is based on forces and power. Uh, everyone in every country, nation state, naturally tries to impose its own interest through forces and maybe, if necessary, through violence. Uh, and all states are not of the same importance, of the same uh, power. Uh, in the world today, we are confronted with three, four superpower that are competing together but competition can lead to confrontation and sometimes to war. We tend to forget that since we live in peace for long. Um, the world is characterized, characterized by persisting traditional threats, armed forces, development of weapons of mass destruction, but also new threats, uh, climate change, and competition for natural resources that are more and more uh, scarce, uh, water, uh, uh, mineral, minerals, and so on. And also the cross-border crimi criminality is also very much rising. All these new threats can only be confronted and resolved through cooperation. 
some big power might think that they can do that on their own, but more and more it's evident, obvious, that they cannot and that they will have also to cooperate. So this is maybe looks a little bit pessimistic. Uh, what is the fate of small states in this cold world of interest and power? They can, at the best, they are marginalized. They have no voice. Nobody cares about them. Uh, in the worst case, they can be crushed or swallowed by big powers. So, the small states can transform this faith in a kind of choice and mission by following two paths. First, to prepare for the worst. And that is why I insisted also on NATO. Belgium decided that they can not defend themselves by, them, by themselves or with a few countries around them, like-minded countries, as we say, but they need an organization and a big power as a uh, protector. And with protection goes also some deals, border sharing and so on, cultural influence, political influences. But that is the reality. We need alliance. But that is not the, uh, the ideal world. Because an alliance is mainly, even if we don't say that, but built against an enemy. And we have then to define an enemy, and then we have to be ready to go to war. So we have also to prepare for the best, working for the best, working patiently with uh, patience, uh, the step by step, and that is what Belgium has decided by funding with five other, other countries, the European Union, and working in, with the international organizations, mainly the United Nations, to create, and I repeat, a world based on values and principles and not only of forces and interest and power. That might be idealistic. I don't know if you uh, have read Jonathan Swift, the Gulliver's Travel. That is a little bit the story uh, where the U.S. of big powers don't want to find themselves. It's uh, bound by small countries in a system of rules. Of course, when rules accommodate the interest, they agree, but when they are not accommodating the interest, they have the power to break them. So it's uh, ideal, I call the, uh, in philosophy, this is a re regulatory ideal. It, le it guides our action, but it's never ended, it's never finished. It's a continuous effort. So I already said the best, the most of this, what I call the Belgian way. The Belg I told you that Belgium is a evolved to a federal state. This movement was to uh, give more power to the local population. So to, uh, that uh, uh, the citizens could decide by themselves. So it's a decentralized state. Some states, like France, uh, are organized around one city, Paris. Everything goes to Paris. In Belgium, we have many cities that are of equal importance, so it's, the power is more equal and more closer to the citizen. That is one movement, devolution, decentralization. There is another movement of uh, political uh, direction, is the, um, the devolution of power to a higher level or a supranational, where we have more leverage by pooling our efforts and our resources with other countries, we can achieve more. So 
Belgian state is, if you want, uh, a little bit uh, in, um, uh, divided in two different forces, one going to the citizens and the other going to the supranational state. Uh, I will not go into the details of the uh, European Union construc uh, construction, but maybe um, to you, for you to remind, there are two different uh, levels. There is the intergovernmental level, where all states are equal and dialogue with each other, and the supranational level, represented by, mainly by the Commission and the European Parliament, where uh, the states uh, give up their national power to a supranational institution that uh, cares for the interest of everyone, and hopefully on an equal basis. And then I told you, uh, not only the European Union for economic, mainly economic and political purpose, but we are also a founding member of NATO uh, as a military alliance with, um, as at center, the Article 5, which says that an attack of one member is an attack of all members. So it's a very powerful instrument. And the UN, uh, that is characterized uh, by covering main, uh, all countries in the world, but a few that are not fully recognized yet, and uh, that is working for organizing the global world on economic, social, and political level. So this is another man, uh, way of saying it. This is a, a capture of a message from uh, my ministry uh, some times ago. We need multilateralism is part of diplomatic DNA. Multilateralism is opposed to not only bilateralism, but about confrontation of forces. We have to look at all issues from different angles, from the interest of everybody. And trying to have an organization that looks for the interest of all. How we go? So, but of course, we were not alone the founder of uh, the European Union and NATO. We were working first with our immediate neighbor, and I would like uh, to say a few words of them. Luxembourg, that is even smaller than Belgium, and the Netherlands, that thinks that is not as small as Belgium, but that is the, uh, maybe the smallest of the me medium-sized power. But even them had to follow the, the Belgium in the construction of Europe, because we are all dependent on uh, European and global markets for our development, and we cannot have leverage by ourselves. This is the same uh, uh, ideas, dependence on uh, open economies. You know that Belgium is one of the most open economy in the world, uh, which means that we are dependent on trade, export, but also on investment from abroad. This is a slide that will need a, a few uh, weeks of lessons <laughs> to explain the European construction and the different institutions in the European construction with these two level of these two direction of uh, cooperation, intergovernmental or supranational communitarian. Uh, the ideal for Belgium would be to have a federal European Union, which means a European Union that is like a government of Europe. But it's an ideal, it's not, we are not there yet. There is still a big dimension of intergovernmental where the big countries, the biggest countries, play a bigger role than the smallest. But we find a way in this system. The European Union evolved in two directions, enlargement and deepening. And these two directions are going together. You see, in the beginning, 
uh, in the Paris Treaty, we were uh, six, and uh, in uh, the Paris Treaty, we founded the uh, community of uh, steel and coal, the pooling of these natural energy, the energies uh, after the war, until 27, oh, sorry, 28 minus one, I would say, because the UK left before they decide to come back. <laughs> uh, and then the other direction it is deepening. So with the enlargement and with the development of European Union, we, are need, we needed to review the treaty. So this is, I will not go into the details, but this is to show you that is an evolution that takes time, that takes a lot of efforts, that there are moments of development, moments of crisis, we have to go beyond the crisis and to continue with our vision, but with a uh, focus also on implementation. So the, the European Union evolved from a mainly, as I said, pooling of uh, resources, steel and coal, to a political entity going through uh, a common agricultural policy, single market, single uh, 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 monetary unit, not for all countries. That is also uh, a, character, a, character, a character, characteristic of the European Union that we need some flexibility to advance. Also a character of budget. So this is more to, to present myself and what the diplomat is. Uh, this is a complex uh, um, work where we have to, of course, defend our own interests, promote our own interests, but more and more, I see, on a cooperative manner and on. Uh, uh, in the framework of inter international institutions. So the old diplomacy of uh, one country to, in front of another country is superseded by cooperation in a network of international cooperation, international uh, organization. So I will leave that. So this is uh, another way to present it, what is cooperation? Is cooperation, as I see for today, with, between Belgium and Korea, we co have to cooperate for a greener global economy, greener and fairer, I will say, to promote our values, to uh, have enough scientific and academic uh, cooperation, and there we have some uh, good examples uh, of, uh, in, in Korea with uh, the Belgian company Solve established in uh, EY University uh, with this research innovation center and uh, uh, University of Ghent Global Campus in uh, Songo. And this uh, also to cooperate for developing our political interest mainly in the UN Belgium has been a member, a non-permanent member of the Security Council, the main organ, decision-making organ of the UN in 2019 and 2020. And our motto, or vision, was to foster consensus and act for peace. So I will stop here with this last slide. Uh, Coming back to our festival and uh, remembering our, uh, some action we had in our first term, st first term here in Korea, my wife and myself, with the, presenting the Belgian stew, <laughs> or Flemish stew. Thank you very much. I'm open for your question.